Oh, hey guys. So, how are you doing? Hello, hello. So, it's been a little while since I recorded a video and I wanted to share a couple of things with you. Let's open my book. It's not that I've been lazy and uh, not that I've been working hard. Christmas is over. 2020 was rough and we are now standing at the start of 2021 which is an exciting time and while we can all feel that January may be a miserable time and things are looking a bit dour there's things to look forward to firstly Veganuary Veganuary 2021 how exciting is that huh Oh, no worries, no worries, just having a look at the chat. So, a couple of things quickly to talk about. Um, firstly, new videos and new products is the exciting part of Veganuary, isn't it? When all of these companies start releasing things that are specifically targeted to those who want to go on a plant-based diet. So, while conventional people may blow out over the Christmas period, vegans definitely go crazy in January for all the new products. So, some of the strangest things I've seen so far has been McCain oven chips with all of their posters and billboards saying, oh, Veganuary, Veganuary, go vegan. I'm thinking, I'm fairly certain chips have always been vegan and it's a bit disingenuous to start trying to target your adverts towards vegans by saying, oh, all we have is potatoes and sunflower. Well, who cares? Let them go for it. Other thing I wanted to quickly say before I get into the main... Uh, point of my video today. If you've got some time head over to adamroxby.uk where you'll see the reason why I've not been posting videos is because I've been just creating loads and loads of content, specifically nursing times stuff, um, newsletters, podcasts, all that sort of stuff and didn't even have time, that's not even to mention, The Weave, the local startup that I'm working with to create an, an environment, a community for aspirational entrepreneurs. Anyway, let's get onto it. The question today, we eat balanced. Some of you may have seen this. There's a new website, a new TV advert. I was sitting there <clears throat> watching the TV. All of a sudden I see this green field, verdant, lush fields out in front of the television. And it was saying, and I quote, because I have to write it down. It said, <clears throat> We've all had a lot on our plate recently. I was thinking, oh, that sounds, that sounds heavy. That sounds almost like pretty much most of the other uh, adverts that we've seen for many other products. And the soothing narrator, no, no, you know, soothing man on the uh, narration was talking about all of this. And I was thinking, yeah, we have all had a lot on our plate recently. This is, uh, this is it's like he's talking to me. But then all of a sudden, it starts saying, so we should be enjoying our meat and dairy. I'm just going, okay, that took a strange, took a strange left turn. So I'm guessing, my, my hypothesis is, that because of the success of Big January growing every year, and the, the, the sort of almost exponential rise of the vegan lifestyle, the meat and dairy industry, was on the one hand getting a bit worried because it's now starting to to impact sales which after all we'll get into is the main reason that these sort of campaigning and lobbyist groups exist and they also felt like oh we want to have like a a nice uplifting heartwarming advert trying to promote our own our own interests so i was significantly and sufficiently intrigued to go and check out the website We Eat Balanced to see what was okay, fair enough. If you want to promote eating meat and dairy, then let's see what you've got to say for yourselves. And the main, well, one of the main thrusts of the argument was vitamin B12. Now, if you're a dyed in the wool vegan like myself, as soon as you get down on your knees and you are knighted as a vegan with your leek on each shoulder, 
and you rise, you are given the handbook. And one of the first things it says is, take your B12. Now, for those of you who don't know, B12 is an essential vitamin. And like most vitamins, you only notice the deficiency after a prolonged period. So people will sort of say, oh, I've never eaten a vegetable in my life and I feel fine. I'll say, well, you may feel fine now, but, you know, come your mid-40s, you'll maybe end up with sort of some sort of cancer or uh, cognitive deficiency, which may be linked back to the fact that you probably weren't eating enough vitamins and minerals in earlier years. So, vitamin B12 is essential, and the advert says that it doesn't exist naturally in the vegan diet. I was thinking, okay, okay, you have uh, It is true that it is an essential vit nutrient, but found naturally, is it? They're saying that vitamin B12 is only found naturally in meat and dairy products. Not entirely true, not entirely true, because quite often farmers will have to supplement a, a supplement a cow's diet with this vitamin b12 because it normally used to be inherently you know in our soil it was something that was um because of soil degradation degra degradation it is now no longer as prevalent as it would be and so we're now having to supplement our diets with vitamin b12 vegans do it directly you take a supplement we gain the b the, uh, the vitamin b12 Happy days. Farmers have to give it to their animals who are then slaughtered and then people who eat meat and dairy consume that and are then they get the B12. So to say that it's found naturally in that diet, not quite accurate, not quite true. I just prefer to cut out the middleman. So I prefer to take my supplements directly rather than having it pre-digested or you know, absorbed by another animal and then having to ingest that flesh to get that myself. The other thing they say is that meat and dairy, sustainable. Red meat and dairy in the UK is among the most sustainable in the world. Good for you, good for you. Well, what does that mean though? What does that mean? Does that mean you're the most sustainable meat and dairy producer of the world? Are you more sustainable than say America or Australia? Well, fair enough. But that still doesn't make you sustainable in comparison to vegetable production or sustaining a vegetarian or a vegan diet. So that's not exactly uh, glowing praise. And then they spoke a bit about iron. Well, fine, yeah, we all know iron's important, but it's obviously the myth that you can only get iron through sort of in ingesting sort of iron-rich meat is nonsense. There's plenty of vegetables and uh, beans, pulses that you can get iron from. So that's what they say. That's what this sort of lobbyist group for the meat and dairy industry have said in their advert. And let's be clear, they're not doing this out of a sense of concern for your, for your public health. They're not doing it saying, guys, we really worry about you. We hope that you're getting enough vitamin B12. We really hope that you're getting enough iron got to follow back and look who's actually funding these people who's actually behind this organization and you say well probably what they're doing it for is because they think blimey there's a lot of there's a lot of vegan food out on the shops today isn't there you know shelves are being dedicated to it every major supermarket wants to show off their vegan credentials by showing how much how much of their sort of product range they've gone plant-based and before it was a uh, a minor sideshow. It was, uh, you know, just something for the meat and dairy industry to say, oh, bless, look at those little plant, look, look at those little carrot munchers. They're, they're having great fun, aren't they? Having their tofu. But now they're starting to get a bit worried because it's not only becoming evident that it's the most healthy way to exist, but it's becoming popular and celebrities are starting to endorse it. It's getting that trendy factor. Um, it's not down, it's not no longer the reserve of the hipsters. It's now having a tangible impact on the sales of meat and dairy. So this is why they're getting concerned, you see. They're getting concerned, not because they're worried about how much vitamin B12 you're having. They're getting concerned because they're not getting as much money as they used to. So, we know what they've said, but it's crucial to hear what they didn't say. 
there was no talk about suffering. Of course there isn't. So not only the suffering on the animals involved of the production, so not you know the, the actual animals that have died to produce your sort of five minutes of enjoyment on the plate, but the sustained acts of cruelty needed to run this kind of industry. Let's not you know beat around the bush. I'm not one of these people that generally like to go for the more sort of shocking um, forms of communication. You know, you see quite a lot of vegans bravely going into slaughterhouses, going undercover, trying to expose some of the actual systemic forms of you know, maltreatment that happen. And some of the proponents of the meat and dairy industry will say, well, these are, these are sort of are regrettable outliers. These are, this is not emblematic of the industry as a whole. Well, okay, fair enough. That may be the case. I will grant you that being generous. But in order to produce milk, for example, there is, there is no way you can get around the production of milk and dairy without causing definitive suffering. You know, when you've heard a female cow crying in agony because their their child has been stolen from them. That's not something that you can explain away or rationalise, especially for something that is demonstrably not needed. You know, if if this was an essential diet and if there was only nutrients and vitamins and minerals and components vital to human health that you had to get from meat and dairy, then why are there so many vegans, you know? Look at me. I am i wouldn't exist if this was the case. Anyway, also fortification, another thing that I don't mention. It's not shouldn't be a dirty word. Many industries do it. Just look at your cereal, look at your bread. They all seem to be, you know, more often than not, they'll be fortified artificially through through some sort of, uh, you know, maybe iron or, you know, B12 or calcium. Fortification shouldn't be seen as a strange thing. And that goes to the back to the whole point of natural. What is natural when they say, oh, the meat and dairy is the only natural way of getting vitamin B12. I think, well, what's natural about any of this? If you've seen, you know, the only natural way of getting a, getting a steak on your plate would be to let animals roam free and graze upon the glades and, uh, you know, wait until they died naturally and then think, well, hey, I might as well eat it. If it's not me, it's going to be the foxes. No, there's nothing natural about the meat and dairy industry. The, the pictures that you see on the new, on the adverts and the pictures that you see on the packaging, it paints a picture that is nowhere near normal. You have these massive farms and the artificial insemination the hormones and the antibiotics you know these animals because they live in such close proximity to the other animals and they live in such conditions they require regular doses of antibiotics seeing as this is the first day of another lockdown here in the uk we all should be acutely aware of the risk of uh, zoonotic diseases, diseases that are thriving and, you know, prevalent in the animal kingdom, transferring over to humanity. You know, it is because of the very fact that this practice is not natural, that we've got diseases like COVID and SARS and, you know, you know maladies that have affected humanity. It's because we live in such close proximity to animals, not because we're cosy with them and we like them and we want to be close to them because we value their f company. No, it's because we want to breed them as intensely as possible to kill them, to eat them, to exploit them. So I kind of promised myself that I wouldn't go into if everyone was vegan, we wouldn't have COVID kind of argument, but I'm, I'm skirting around the edges. I'm tickling the perimeter of that argument. So anyway, Just as the World Health Organization and numerous studies have concluded that a plant-based diet is, and I want to use their wording, a plant-based diet is optimal for human health, all stages of human health, 
let's be clear, not just uh, not just to preserve of those in the Western community who are white, middle class, affluent enough to afford it. No, anybody, regardless, at all stages. So there's even books which I've started to read about how to raise a child, an infant, on a purely plant-based diet, which is possible. And it's ironic, I, f I do find it ironic how when the World Health Organization classifies processed meat as a carcinogen, you know, as, as dangerous as giving your child a cigarette, as dangerous as giving your child a sausage, you think that's quite a striking correlation that you've drawn there. Well, yes it is, but then we've just been sort of hanging on their every word when they say, oh, you must wash your hands for 20 seconds. You think, oh, yes, yes, we must, we must. And, you know, we must uh, have face masks. Oh, yes, 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 you're right, we must, we must. And then they say, sausages are, you know, going to be shortening your life and those of your children. So what? What? As if, as, if, as if that sort of cognitive dissonance couldn't be any more palpable. The fact that we are so invested in a structure and a belief that we want to continue eating meat, but yet we don't want to invest and be willing to give up what we want for the sake of our health, for the sake of our family's health, for the sake of our collective health. So, that is why, as I cradle my book, the good book, it's just a notebook, that is why I believe that we as a society should embrace Veganuary. Go on to veganuary.com, put in your email address, you'll get tips, recipes, money off vouchers, all that sort of stuff. And in the very, very near future, I'm especially thinking of the next couple of days or so, I will have a bumper, bumper load of new vegan products to try. I've not tried them before. I'm very excited. They look tasty. And this is the thing. Not only are they tasty, but they contain all essential, all of the 26 essential vitamins and minerals needed to sustain human health. So what more could you ask? Um, so all that it remains for me to say is thank you very much for, thank you very much for joining me. And if you are interested in some of the other weird stuff that I've been doing, for example, I'm currently in the process of sharing all of the articles I wrote when I was the student nurse editor for the Nursing Times. So if you're nursey related and want to see the kind of stuff that I was getting up to when I was a student nurse, then that's available at adamroxby.uk, as well as some podcasty stuff and other little bits coming. And then if you're business orientated, if you're interested in business stuff, then there's certainly some business stuff coming away as well, where we start to talk about how to help entrepreneurs be better at what they want to do. But anyway, if there's any questions, I'll be happy to ask, answer any of them, or I might just ramble on a little bit more about veganism. One thing I will say before I go. My first instinct when I saw this sort of uh, advert coming on the television about how we all should be eating meat and dairy now, you know, don't let the vegans fool you. What you really need is a steak and a glass of milk. I was thinking, outrageous, out outrageous, how blooming dare they? But then I kind of think of it as a sign that things are moving in the right direction. And this is why. If vegans weren't any bother, if we were just happily, you know, grazing like we normally do and nibbling our nuts, fair enough, who would care? We would just be there in the, this, in the quiet, just minding our own business, whatever. But it's simply now because it is becoming not only so evident that it is the, the right way to exist, Let's be clear, not only from a health standpoint, but that somebody who said to me that in the future we will regard the animal rights issue the same as slavery, you know, or the same as women's rights. Where were you and what side of the argument were you on when the question of animal rights came up? So there's that. But now, now we can say that, okay, we are sufficiently loud enough and we are sufficiently 
organized enough and sufficiently influential enough that we are causing them concern and that they feel this is what they need to spend their money on this is what they need to spend their time on is to try to convince people beyond their own you know despite their own inherent just knowledge that what they're doing is wrong they are you know you are eating these products and eating these things and it is causing you even the slightest amount it's causing you a little bit of concern there's a little voice inside your head that knows that what you're doing is goes against your morality you instinctively know that cruelty to animals is wrong you instinctively know that consuming hormones and the flesh of something that's died in fear is wrong you instinctively know that eating something which has you know been saturated with antibiotics and has been dead for weeks isn't the most healthy consuming the products that are designed for a baby cow when you i presume are not a baby cow isn't natural if we want to talk about natural we know that eating an egg you know a small capsule designed to create a life with all the energy and the you know uh saturated fats and cholesterol all of that and you have what two three a day again you know these things are not right and that's why they have to create adverts to try and convince you that no, no, don't listen to your ethics. Don't listen to your morality. Don't listen to that voice inside your head. Trust us. Hear my soothing voice on the advert. This is natural. Enjoy your steak. Have a glass of milk. Go on, give it to your child. So, yeah, I feel invigorated. And to my fellow vegans, so should you. You, feel, you should feel like you've achieved something being part of a, a movement, not only, you know, and people say to me, like, can't you just be happy? It's a, I suppose it's the same argument that people who are fundamentally religious get asked, you know, okay, so you found God, why do you have to tell anybody about it? Why can't you just be happy? You know, oh, great, Adam, you're a vegan. Oh, go on, tell me, tell me again how healthy you feel. Or tell me again how full of energy and how you've never been healthier. Go on, tell me more about it. You know, why do you have to proselytise and talk about it to other people? Well, do you kind of think, well, yeah, okay, there's, a, there's an element of that, but the, the answer is twofold. Firstly, if I'd found the secret or found, like, oh my goodness, I've been doing it wrong so many years, I thought I was eating healthily when I was having, like, a, you know, balanced diet of meat and dairy, but... Blimey, it turns out I was really, really wrong. And I have found, as stated by the World Health Organization, I have found the most optimal diet for human health. But I'm not going to tell anybody about it because I want, I want to live for as long as possible in the healthiest way possible, but I don't want my family to because I want to outlive them all. No, that's obviously the, that's the uh, ravings of a psychopath. No, you would... Share this knowledge with your friends, with your family, and with, you know, the wider audience, the wider, the wider public. You'd want to sort of sing it from the rooftops and say, this is the best way to live. And you can eat what you, you know, eat what you like and eat enjoyable food and not be the cause of your own death. How about that? You know, the saying goes, I don't mind dying. I just don't want to be the cause of it. So if I can... If I can eat in a way that means I'm not going to get the biggest causes of death in the West, heart disease, stroke, then fantastic. I'll do that, but at the, at the other time, I'm not going to be selfish. I'm going to share that knowledge with other people. Secondly, and probably more important for some people, but not so much for me, it's the animal rights issue. It's like, if I was participating three times a day, in suffering of sentient beings and I'd then come to the epiphany that actually I don't think I want to be a part of that anymore that doesn't sit right with my morality that's good for me obviously it means my conscience is clear but then you see some people just don't realize or don't haven't been shown the reality of what it's like the saying goes that if 
abattoirs and slaughterhouses had glass walls, then the world would be vegan. If people could actually see the suffering and the violence that has to, has to, there's no, you know, it's not a choice. This has to happen. This violence and suffering has to happen for, for that food to get on your plate. Then large proportions of the population would say, I don't think I can do it. I don't think I can. And it wasn't so much an issue for me. For me, it was more the energy and the resources that went into creating this just wasn't sustainable from an environmental standpoint. And that was my main reason. Then I became turned on to the health aspects of it. Like the actual rubbish that goes into these products is not something that I want to consume. You know, you are what you eat in the very literal sense. I didn't want to be this fear and pain and anxiety. I didn't want to be that, so I didn't want to consume it. And then you think, okay, the suffering as well is an issue. So this is the great thing about the plant-based lifestyle. No matter what it is you're interested in, if you're interested in health, if you're interested in the environment, if you're interested in suffering, if you're interested in the longevity of your family, which is a big thing for me, you know, being a father of four, you know, it's, it's something that I think about very regularly every time I see my daughter picking up a sausage I think I wish I had dominion I wish I had the ability to to say give me that have a corn one I bet you don't even know the difference but yeah anyway I've taken up enough of your time final thing to say please check out adamroxby.uk does sound a little bit begging but no I think it's for your benefit there's so much there that I've been putting up recently new stuff every week for you to enjoy. But anyway, thank you very much. Speak to you soon. New video with some new vegan products coming in the next couple of days. Toodles.